Taylor Swift has become one of the most popular artists of all time, selling out arenas and turning teardrops on her guitar into Grammy Awards and millions upon millions of record sales. She's even become quite popular in sports because of her latest relationship with Chiefs tight end Travis Kelsey. But many people do not realize that Taylor, who started out as a country artist who professed to even be a believer in Christ, has now come out mocking Christians and even performing rituals at her concert that many would claim are actually satanic. Welcome back to the Good Fight Radio Show. I'm your host, Chad Davidson of Good Fight Ministries. And on today's episode, we are going to be looking at none other than the most popular artist probably going right now in Taylor Swift. And we're going to be discussing her as a role model, even for some Christians that claim that she is. And to discuss this very important topic is none other than the president and founder of Good Fight Ministries and pastor of Blessed Hope Chapel in Simi Valley, California, Pastor Joe Schimmel. Amen, Chad. And uh, what kind of role model is she? You know, that's the question. Uh, we just checked. She has over 100 million, you know, a month Spotify uh, subscribers. Yeah, subscribers. That's, that's crazy. Uh, and she's influencing a mass amount of people. And because of her relationship, to whatever degree she has one with Kelsey, uh, it's opened up a whole new aspect of a fan base to her. And she's milking that for all she can get out of it. Uh, and it's really tragic because she is, you know, definitely obviously a publicity hound, but uh, she's public, you know, she publicizes her relationships with several different men. I mean, what kind of, how many of you, if you have children, you have a daughter, do you want them to bounce from one sexual relationship to another, from one boyfriend to another? I mean, she's had like a, about a dozen or so, not two or three different boyfriends. She's had about a dozen different boyfriends and publicly, uh, yeah. publicly. And, and who knows about, you know, who knows? I mean, I don't want to speculate. Uh, how much worse it gets beyond that. I mean, that's bad enough. And in fact, we, there's such a uh, tragedy going on right now with regard to an epidemic in sexually transmitted diseases. It's actually pushed under the rug, but, you know, one out of four people, uh, last time I checked, you know, have have, have a sec of teenagers and so forth have sexually transmitted diseases. And many of these are deadly. Many of them keep these teenagers as they get older from having children. They're absolutely devastating. Uh, sometimes they're passed on to the children, syphilis, is passed on sometimes during vaginal birth when a child is born blind. This is very wicked, but this this un, this uh, promotion of sexual perversion by a gal that claims to be innocent and has claimed to be a Christian in the past. Uh, but as we'll see as we go through this, because this will probably be one of the more in-depth videos you ever see on, on Taylor Swift. Uh, we only have a half hour or so, but at the same time, you're going to see a lot of information that you probably didn't know about her, that she's actually leading people down the broad road to destruction. Yeah, it is really, really sad to see that. And I know a lot of professing Christians that were huge fans of Taylor Swift. And and that hasn't stopped. In fact, an article that has now been taken down but was put up just recently by the Gospel Coalition was titled Seven Things Christians Can Learn from Taylor Swift's Eras Tour. Now, I do believe a lot of these articles that get written and videos that are done by uh, Christians who are putting this stuff out a lot of times, similar to uh, the stuff with Marvel, with the Frank Turek's book and so forth, where they're like, oh, well, we'll just take whatever the world's talking about and we'll repackage it. Not expose it for the wickedness that it is. And they actually end up promoting it. But promote the yeah. stuff. You know, people are telling you that Harry Potter is the closest figure in all of fiction to the Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody yeah. practicing witchcraft. I mean, a sorcerer. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I don't want to get... A sorcerer model after Satan fell as Crowley, nonetheless. <laughs> there you go. Check out our videos. There, there you go. And we have a whole thing. We'll put that in the link in the description where we answer all the things that are said, um, you know, publicly about that. But, but Joe, I say that because this is just one more instance where people are saying, oh, well, look, Taylor Swift and so many people did start, you know, with her, you know, with teardrops on my guitar. And, you know, I was the girl who wasn't getting picked for the cheerleading squad and stuff. And now that's gone to such a provocative... I mean, her recent tour, um, the provocative nature by which she dances with now, you know, on chairs and, and so forth, is pretty grotesque. And you have Christians spending upwards of twelve hundred dollars to go see this this tour right here in Los Angeles. And and Joe, people are thinking like that, you know, they call themselves Swifties. That you know, Taylor Swift is their role model, and people are like, oh, what is she up to? And we're a Swiftie, and we love our cats, and whatever it is. And, and Joe, how, what kind of a role model really is she? Yeah, when you think about that uh, and the influence that she has over so many, not just you know, a generation or two ago, but now multiple 
yeah, multiple generations. It's, it's really horrific when you realize uh, she promotes a very do what thou wilt uh, subtle form of of, of occultism, witchcraft. Uh, and if I'm, you're saying, well, she doesn't promote witchcraft. If you're into Taylor Swift and you're claiming to be a Christian, uh, just you know, hold your horses for a minute. You're going to see she absolutely does promote uh, witchcraft, uh, which is forbidden by God as the domain of the demonic world, the powers of darkness that Christians are forbidden to get into. She promotes many anti-Christian things. The Bible speaks of those who profess to know Christ, but by their works they deny him, Titus chapter 1, verse 16. And if you love Jesus and you're watching this video, you say, I'm, I'm a true Christian. I'm not. There's millions of people who claim to be Christians, just like Taylor Swift, uh, and some of them do it because they want to bring Christians into uh, their fold as far as you know, getting millions of more fans. It's a huge fan base, right? Uh, so uh, if you really do love Christ, though, uh, I want to challenge you in the name of Jesus Christ. Will you put his word and your love for him over Taylor Swift and any other artist? And you can realize when you're actually committing idolatry. You, you, you realize you're putting someone before God when you compromise his word and you put that person and your affinity for them and their promotion of darkness above Christ and reject Christ's teaching and his warnings about following people uh, that that he warns against. So we need to be very, very careful with this. Uh, Chad, she pushes a do what thou wilt mentality uh, in her songs. In fact, in one song, uh, just in, I could mention several along these lines, but uh, she, she in her song, New York, uh, she literally sings, you know, every uh, everybody here uh, was someone else before. And you can want who you want, boys and boys and girls and girls. You know, boys can be with boys and, and girls can be with girls and you can have whoever you want. And when she was asked if that song uh, was referencing homosexuality, she answered in the affirmative. Well, where are the lines? Where are the moral lines? And who makes up the moral lines? Is Taylor Swift the paragon of virtue to where she's able to instill in people where the lines should be? Or is the creator the one who made us in his image and made us male and female who warns against homosexual practices uh, and warns about against incest and warns against bestiality and warns against these things? Does he draw the lines? And if we're going to say, no, we can make the lines where we want, then, then how can you condemn pedophilia? How can you condemn a man raping a little boy? Or how can you, you say, well, maybe it's not rape and maybe the little boy consents, which is what a lot of pedophiles say. How do you know that's wrong? How can we condemn that as wrong? Because we have the word of God and this same word condemns homosexuality. Uh, so, uh, you know, when you're putting, if you're claiming to be a Christian, you're putting Taylor Swift in a promotion of homosexuality uh, over God's word and you're accepting that, then you end up in a very bad position because that becomes a form of idolatry. Yeah, I think that is a huge point for people to start to understand, hopefully, you know, and stop promoting and keep giving their money to such an artist like this. And, you know, she had come out um, not that long ago, and a lot of people really were like, I think Taylor Swift doesn't want to talk about politics for a long time in her career because they didn't want, she didn't, they didn't want her to lose an audience, right? Huge fan base, I'm sure yeah. whoever's pushing her, but... You know, this whole thing happened uh, where she had to finally say something, not only about homosexuality, but also when it came to abortion, that she said basically that if you're a Christian, you can't be pro-life. You can't be against abortion if you're Christian. She started saying that. And maybe, Joe, I think people also need to see the fact that she has songs out there that also talk about Hinduistic philosophy. In fact, Joe, you talked about a song uh, recently when we were discussing this called Karma that Taylor Swift got into. So I think people mean, need to also hear what that song's all about. Yeah, Karma is a uh, false religious system. It teach, It's the backbone or a big part and parcel of the idea of reincarnation, uh, that we are reincarnated in what we do here on this planet and, uh, you know, basically shows what kind of, what will come back as a bug or, or a princess or what have you, depending on, uh, most people don't want to come back bugs and everybody when they talk about their past lives are usually princes or princesses but there's only so much of those guys to go around so it's it's a, it's a false theology in fact Chad you know it's based on work salvation there's no forgiveness when it comes to karma and in Hinduism there's there's the, the, not the Lord Jesus Christ God becoming a man and dying for our sins so we can escape the wrath of God and have eternal life with him it's absolutely diametrically opposed to salvation and Chad over and over again that song uh, she uses by the way Bad example uh, for for young people, for all people. I mean, she's she cusses throughout her songs. Sometimes she uses the F word, uh, even when she's talking. But she uses 
different four-letter words in this song, a karma, uh, and in her karma song, and she says, uh, karma is my boyfriend, she sings. She sings, karma is a god. She actually says karma is God. That's blasphemy. That's, uh, uh, you know, using God's name in vain, mixing it with karma, and also teaching a false God because God is not karma. Thankfully, God is love, and he has mercy and grace upon us where we're saved by his grace and not by our works. Yeah, I, and I think, you know, when you hear her saying stuff like that, and I think what people may not be understanding, you know, with this whole this whole scenario with her being obviously the biggest art usually well, probably the big at least the biggest female artist but right now the most popular one in fact yeah. her recent eras tour video that came out has already grossed over 93 million dollars just recording her concert joe i mean we're talking about and that beats justin bieber his movie that came out for yeah. his tour back in 2011 uh there was around 73 million at this time and so you're like wow i mean people are really into this they're really into her and when I hear her pushing things like karma, karma is God, and, and so forth, it just reminds me so much of George Harrison with the Beatles, yeah. with the song Hallelujah. That's right. And basically, instead of it just being a song where, as George Harrison talked about, you were tapping your foot along, singing Hallelujah, Hallelujah, and then he sneaks in Krishna, it almost seems like when it comes to Taylor Swift and her lifestyle, she was singing Hallelujah, Hallelujah, getting yeah. a lot of the... The artist, not just artists, but getting a lot of young fans that were into her, that were Swifties. And then eventually, once the hook has been yeah, that's sunk it. That's in, how it works. these young people are tapping their foot to teardrops on my guitar, are now tapping their foot to karma is God. I mean, yeah. are you serious? Yeah, absolutely, Chad. Uh, it's funny because before we you know, went on uh, for this podcast, we were talking about how uh, you know, this whole thing where the Beatles, you know, uh, they come out with songs that seem so innocent. You know, I want to hold your hand. And uh, it starts with holding hands. Before you know it, you're in bed with uh, the Beatles, and they're singing all about LSD and Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds, which they denied was about LSD. Then Paul McCartney, after John Lennon died, said it was always about LSD. And about uh, Lester Crowley, who's on the top left, one guy over on Sgt. Pepper's Only Hearts Club Band album. And John Lennon singing about, you know, or talking about interviews, how he gets possessed by different spirits. One will come in, he's a hollow temple, then it'll leave, another one will enter into his body. They're being used by spirit, the spirit world. And Yoko Ono, John Lennon's, uh, you know, wife said, you know what, uh, they were like four mediums at a seance. And and they didn't know everything that was coming through but them, but it was coming through them. So they know to a degree, I mean, they're definitely putting Crowley up there, working with the Beatles with their satanic magic request. So they were definitely in the know to a degree. But who knows what Taylor Swift knew right away. Uh, the, the enemy was just playing her, perhaps, and now she's more knowledgeable about what's going on. And she's actually, uh, well, I would say quite devious in the way that she's leading many people by claiming to be a Christian into very anti-Christian behavior. Yeah, I think that's one of the things you had mentioned, too, already, you know, but this do what thou wilt, uh, you know, mentality that she has already pushed over and over again, the promotion of homosexuality as well, that we just see kind of just, I mean, now it's just been ramped up lately with her. Yeah. And and in fact, and this is the one that maybe bothered me uh, the most when I was looking at all of her music, her music videos and so forth, you know, because she had a music video called You Need to Calm Down. Yeah. Right. And who was it that needs to calm down? It was Christians who yeah. need to calm down. And in fact, it wasn't just Christians. It was a caricature of Christians that made them trailer park people who are too dumb to know how to spell certain words on their signs condemning yeah. homosexuality. Some of them are missing a couple teeth. Uh, she's, I mean, if, can you imagine if she did that with, say, Muslims? I mean, she never would, right? Or if she did that with, you know, Jews Hindus. or yeah. Hindus or Hindus, right? But guess what? She's a Christian, but she's painting them in a corner. And you have a, a, as though, uh, you know, if you if you are unsupportive of the homosexual lifestyle that she wants to see flourish, men with men, which actually, if you love people that are engaged in homosexual activity, you'd warn them because the mortality rate for homosexuals is very low. Uh, if she claims to be a Christian, she knows what the Bible says about not to be deceived, that homosexuals not hear God's kingdom. So she truly cares about homosexuals and she is truly claimed to be a Christian and follow the Bible. You think she'd be concerned about where they're headed. We're the ones that actually care enough to say something when it's not popular. It's easy to pat people on the back while they're going to hell, you know? So it's really heartbreaking because, yeah, she has like uh, these these people that look like, you You kind of characterize them as, as, as like trailer trash. And what happens is she has Katy Perry, she has some of those popular actresses and Ellen's in this, all these different high-profile actors and, and pop stars doing this video with her. 
and they're celebrating you know that uh there's all these transgender people these 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 transsexuals and so flaunting this with the rainbow colors and everything having this great big party and these professing christians are on the outside of this uh holding up these signs like hell with fire around it to warn them because jesus warned it would be like the days of lot in the end of days like the days of Sodom and Gomorrah. And homosexuality, the Bible says, would be rampant in the end times. And Jesus defined marriage as two, a male and a female. He said uh, God made them male and female. The two would become one flesh. And in the spirit of Christ, in the word of Christ, which is the New Testament, it's called the word of Christ, uh, Jesus reveals that homosexuality, it, it, uh, it, his heart breaks, because that's not how he made us. Men are not made to have sex with men, you know, going in through the outdoor and creating AIDS and all sorts of diseases I mean, just read the scripture, look at the effect of it, look what's happened to civilizations that have embraced it in the past. It's absolutely heartbreaking. And if you're caught up in that lifestyle, Jesus loves you. He cares about you. He cares about you so much. He died for you just as he died for us because we're all sinners. We've all had sins that need to be forgiven and there's sins that we have to repent of to come to Jesus. But Chad, it's imperative that people realize that uh, that if they're Taylor Swift fans, they're claiming to be Christians, that she's hold, the, she has these guys holding up signs with like homosexuality, you mentioned misspelled. And instead of an X, there's a K, and then the I is missing, and the X is gone, and it, that's okay. they don't know how to spell, and that that they're, this hasn't really been thought out, and these are just bigoted people. They're racist because they're warning about this lifestyle. And uh, she basically, and, and Chad, it gets really, really sad because I didn't recognize this the first time I checked out that video. Uh, I recognized the misspelled words and things of that nature, but she has a, a, a depiction of Jesus with the long hair, with the, the it's a whole Jesus look that's popular. Uh, in, in paintings and so forth, and he that she's making him a full blown flaming you know transgender guy, and she he's, it's almost like he's being given communion by a lady next to him that uh, appears to be a lady, it's just and it's just blasphemy. It reminded me of Madonna a lot, and uh, I'm sorry, man. You claim to love Jesus and depict him in such a wicked way, uh, and put and by the way, it's a different Jesus. It's not the Jesus of the gospel. It's not the Jesus. It's not the historical Jesus who died for us. It's a Jesus that's affirming sexual perversion. And, you know, I, I hope, you know, if you're listening to this and you, you know, you for some reason continue to listen to her music for whatever reason, uh, what would compel you to do that. And maybe this isn't enough, but I think this this last point that we have to try to make con- concisely here, um, the fact that people are seeing some of the stuff in her concerts now, stuff that wasn't in there before, but it does seem like there was a shift where all of a sudden she went from dark to dark, just straight darkness. I mean, even in that video that we just talked about, all of a sudden things are going up in flames. Yeah. It's kind of interesting, yeah. But Joe, it seems like she's actually not just promoting, you know, karma and Hinduism and Eastern thought or anti, you know, Christian theory. I mean, the thing you just said about Jesus uh, it just bothers me so much. But, but also, even Joe promoting witchcraft as well. Yeah, absolutely. In fact, if you look at her videos and and her songs and so forth, uh, it's it's quite crazy how much she's actually promoting witchcraft, not only in song and and video, but also with little comments that she makes on Twitter and so forth. In fact, it's interesting when you look at Swift's 2020 music video for her song Willow, which is used, by the way, in a number of witchcraft spells. Uh, Swift herself had admitted that Willow, quote, sounds like casting a spell to make someone fall in love with you, end quote. And it's interesting that in Taylor Swift's dancing witch version of, of Willow, uh, that it shows her as part of a witch's coven, and it shows her going out with other witches to perform occult rituals, and when she gets there to, you know, where the coven is actually casting their spells and so forth, there's these orbs, these, con- it's like they're conjuring spirits and these orbs are like coming out of the, the pits of hell or whatever. And it's interesting because in her reference to her Lonely Witch remix of Willow, uh, she posts herself uh, with the caption, quote, witches be like, sometimes I just want to listen to music while pining away, sulking, staring out a window. It's me. I'm witches. End quote. And Swift's Moonlit Witch remix, uh, she uh, posted the words, quote, ever find yourself waiting for the signal and meeting someone after dark and happening upon a majestic coven in the woods? Then she goes on to say, me neither, but do you want to, your music to make you feel like that? Uh, then the Willow Moonlit Witch version is for you. I mean, this is a total promotion over and over again of witchcraft. She's seen at different times making the devil signs with her, her fingers, you know, the horns and putting horns alongside her head, you know, taking off a, 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 witchy, a witchy mask and so forth. And it's interesting. This is definitely having an influence on people. In fact, after many remixes of Willow promoting witchcraft, Witch's School website, offer, which offers classes on witchcraft, tweeted, quote, 
we welcome Taylor Swift 13 to our tribe. And one fan, when I was reading some of the comments under one of the Willow videos, she states, quote, uh, we are not Swifties now. We are witches, end quote. Wow. You know what? And I have to say, you know, for those that are believers that, that are seeing this, to understand that there is no, it's very, very clear when you read Revelation 21.8, yeah. that, that anyone practicing witchcraft, anyone practicing sorcery, they are thrown into the lake of fire, which the That's Bible right. describes as the second death. Yeah. Horrifying. And it, it is it is heartbreaking to even toy around with it is one thing. But to seemingly promote it to the point where we're actually seeing a net effect of people wanting to practice witchcraft, yeah. man, the millstone. Yeah, I was thinking that same scripture as Chad as you're talking. The In millstone. Matthew 18, it says it's, be, it's Jesus says greater. It's better for you that a large, a huge. The Greek word means huge millstone. These things weighed, you know, thousands of pounds. Be hung around your neck, and you'd be thrown into the depths of the sea. Then the faith that you'll suffer if you lead just one of the little ones astray. So my heart breaks for the millions of people that are following her and following her in, many of them following her into sexual depravity, many of them following her into Eastern mysticism, many of them following her into the, through her promotion of witchcraft in, into the occult. And that's that broad road that leads to destruction. Uh, my heart breaks for them first and more, most because they're the victims that she's deceiving. But my heart also breaks for Taylor Swift because she's being used by spirits and she has no idea as how horrific uh, her experience will be on the day of judgment because the Bible says it's pointed a man once to die, Chad. And after this, a judgment, every single one of us will stand before God and give an account for our lives. And I want to encourage you, the listener, are you saved? Uh, if you died today, would God let you into his, his heaven? He won't let you in unless you know the Lord Jesus Christ, unless you've been forgiven of your sins, unless you have recognized that, man, I'm in trouble because the Bible says all of sin and I've come short of God's glory. The Bible says the wage of sin is death and eternal separation from God. But guess what? Jesus died on the cross. He paid for your sins, man. He was pinned to the cross and he suffered God's wrath in your place so you don't have to suffer the punishment that you and I and we all deserve. That's why Jesus Christ died, so you can be born again, so you can have new life, so he can, he can forgive you of your sins, so he can come and live in your heart, and so you can have an eternal destiny with him. But I'll tell you what, man, if you go the karmic road, your, your works are going to outweigh any good works you've done, and you're going to go to hell. You're not going to be reincarnated into a princess or a bug. You're going to be separated from God for eternity. So Chad and I, we encourage you, man, embrace Jesus Christ right now as your Lord and Savior while you still have an opportunity. And if you're into Taylor Swift, uh, your money is going to promote more and more of her lies. I would turn from her and turn to music that truly glorifies the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you guys. And this week's feature product is Sparky the Broken Mirror. You can check it out at sparkybook.com.